Everybody loves a good story. Grab a cup of coffee and join us as we have fun and also learn a few things from some ladies who have seen God at work in their lives. And long story short, they're here to tell us all about it. Hey everyone, Allie here from Real Talk Weekly. Today I have the joy and privilege to introduce to you a dream becoming a reality. And that dream (laughs) is this podcast designed to share the real and the raw and the fun stories of life as a woman. And I also have the special honor of introducing you to the hosts of this show, two lovely ladies that I get to call friends, Misty Wilson and Jennifer Welch. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. I'm so happy y'all are doing this. This is going to be a lot of fun. And they are going to host this podcast. And it's really going to be a series of interviews, just chatting with ladies about their lives. And we want this to be a place where women can gather and come and have the honest conversations of life. Um, We want you to laugh. We want you to cry if you need to. Um, But more importantly, we just want you to be encouraged for 30 to 45 minutes of your day. So I want you all to just tell us a little bit about yourselves. Okay. You want me to go first? I do. Okay. Yes. Um, my name is Misty Wilson. I was raised in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Ooh. Little tiny from town. The ghetto. Yes. Can you say that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> definitely the ghetto, if we can say that. Um, it was a, yeah, it's a, I've heard it was called the armpit of America. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, well, you're um, beautiful nah. for coming from the yes. armpit. So. It's kind of a sad town, but <laughs> it, it, when I was there, it was great. It's just kind of, it's kind of hit hard times mm-hmm. of late. Hopefully it'll be on the way. Deodorant. That's, that's Hopefully what it Hopefully it'll be yeah. on the way up. But, um, yeah. So Pine Bluff, Arkansas to Janet and Mike Brewer. <laughs> like I could, <laughs> I could make this a really long story, but I'll skip to, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I grew up in a real, in a Christian family of two God-fearing parents mm-hmm. um, and a brother, Luke, and he also goes to the church that I go to, so I'm blessed to have my whole family around me. Yeah. Um, and i uh trying to think of anything else. Well, obviously, I asked Jesus into my heart when I was seven, um, so from then on, I, you know, was just seeking what God wanted me to do. I was blessed with student leaders that really helped me throughout my life. My parents, <laughs> I have just like a super boring childhood story. No. <laughs> but, Your parents are really cool and funny and creative. And, and I feel like you can't just capture that in an introductory they, statement. So. You know, I don't even know how to tell you. Like I <laughs> could just start crying right now over how much I love my mom and dad. They're just so very sweet. strong, very mm. just loving, funny wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And my brother too, we just have a wonderful family. Mm -hmm. So I'll just quit being sappy. But um, (laughs) anyway, so yeah, after that, I went to Washita Baptist University in Arkadelphia and met the some of my best friends ever Mm -hmm. and my husband, Bob. Mm -hmm. And we met as I think sophomores. And then we got married right out of wow, right out of college. Yeah, we were kind of babies when we got married (laughs) we literally got married and went on our honeymoon came back and he had we had Saturday and Sunday and then he went to medical school on Monday oh my gosh so we had a a rocky little start there but um and you saw him again in eight years (laughs) yeah yeah exactly pretty much um it was it's sometimes I look back on it I'm like we we had major our major marriage struggles probably at the beginning just mm-hmm. because I was in a job. I worked as a I went to school for social work. When I look back on it, I really wish I had majored in English mm-hmm. and done more. I took some writing classes, but it's one of my major regrets in life. As my mom, I remember her saying, "Why don't you why don't you major in English? You love it." And I was like, I was like, "Mom, I have to write really long papers. <laughs> like that's so boring." <laughs> And now Misty writes oh, books. Yes, so exactly. there's like, just, Not just, you know, small ones. Right. Well, and, right. And, and that's all I ever wanted to do from when I was yeah. little. Like, I had a diary from seven years old till... So, I mean, writing was just always a part of my life. I don't know why I didn't pursue it in college. Because your mom told you. Probably yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. But also, it was just boring. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... I was a terrible college student. So, anyway... 
Um, I did. End up, I worked as a social worker with kids with developmental issues, and mm-hmm. it turned out to be a really, really hard job. There was abuse going on in mm-hmm. the organization. It wasn't great, and so from there, I uh, ended up at the Capitol working for the Lieutenant Governor. So Ooh, that was fancy. Win Rockefeller. Yeah. I was his assistant. So yeah. not just anyone. A Rockefeller. Win Rockefeller. That's why it was such a fun job. <laughs> <laughs> so later, we moved to Pine Bluff for Bob's residency. I'm trying to speed this up. I'm probably taking too long. (laughs) I had um, Wade, uh, and then I had Allie Jane. We moved up here, and we came to First Baptist Rogers. We moved to um, Springdale, and that's been 20 years ago, I guess. So we've been here, been here a while. And yeah, in the middle of that, I really decided I wanted to write. So I wrote two fiction novels, which I've never pursued publishing. independently or whatever Mm -hmm. I just have always wanted to do that traditionally and so kind of in the middle of thinking maybe I should just go ahead and get them printed I don't know the dream I know know you've got a lot of people who would read them yeah I mean Jennifer and I are like sitting here like we'll do it there's at least 10 people (laughs) (laughs) tens and tens tens. there's tens and tens of people who would read (laughs) but um my mom I think she would really like it yeah yeah <laughs> anyway, well, I mean, we have a few followers. I bet they would rate it. Yeah, yeah. maybe like five or six. But it would be a full circle cool. moment for your mom. She's like, remember that time yeah. in college when I told you to do this? So. Oh yeah, she probably doesn't even remember that. <laughs> we haven't ever talked about that. The time that I did not take her advice, and I should have. But the one time, the one that, that was <laughs> yeah, just one time. <laughs> anyway, um, I, th- I think that's it. Right? I love that. And Misty yeah. is really. Um, Missy is a really good sounding board, I feel like, and she doesn't give herself enough credit, but she has a very creative spirit yeah. and she gets involved with a lot of different things in women's ministry. And I know that she and Jennifer have a special friendship too. So Jennifer, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I feel like sometimes when you were talking, I'm like, gosh, we are so different. We are but, very different. But then there were times I was like, well, I mean, this one's not that different. But <laughs> anyway, so I grew up in South Arkansas too, but I grew up in Magnolia and... I mean, I grew up in church, and my parents are Kurt and Karen Talley, and they're the Awana missionaries for the state of Arkansas, and I mean, I've always been in church, and Awana was a big part of my life, Mm -hmm. and I mean, I did the thing, you guys, like I did it until (laughs) I was a senior in high school, and I got the citation, like my name is on the wall somewhere at Awana headquarters, because I did it. Wow, that's impressive. I know, I know, you're jealous, but it's fine, (laughs) it's going to be okay. So anyway, I did all of those things. Um, I was saved when I was seven, too, I think, and... um, I don't know why, but I just love this story. So it was a, like we were learning a verse in Awana, and I was taking a bath before Awana. As you should. It, yes. So it was like basically <laughs> holy water, you guys. <laughs> and so then we come, like I'm in the bath with my mom. And, or my mom wasn't in the bath with me, but she's just giving me a bath. And she, I was like, what does it mean to be saved? And so then we went in her room and prayed. But um, yeah, I was saved at a young age, but... I did not have the same story that Misty did, Um, (laughs) even though I stayed in church all through high school and even college. Like, I came to U of A, and I did not miss many Sundays, and I came straight to First Baptist Rogers. My dad had um, people that he knew here, and before ever um, graduating high school, I had made connections with a couple that went to church here at the time, and so if they invited me, I came, Mm -hmm. and so... But all throughout that time, I was just, mm, I really liked myself. And Mm -hmm. so I made a lot of decisions for myself. (laughs) And I really just thought. And they weren't major. It wasn't your major that you were talking about. Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) No, I mean like personal life choices. So anyway, um, my sophomore year of college, I guess it was really the summer between my freshman and sophomore Mm -hmm. year. I started noticing some weird things were happening with my health. And um, over the next few months, um, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and I ended up like just having to move back home because I was really sick. And at that point, my parents had moved from South Arkansas up to Bell Vista. And so it wasn't like I was having to go back to Magnolia mm-hmm. with my head hung in shame. Um, <laughs> but so how, what, what year, what, when, how old were you when you were diagnosed? I had just turned 20. Okay. Mm, I didn't realize yeah. that. Yep. Just five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys, that's funny. Anyway, so uh, really at that point when I had moved back home, I had just like had this overwhelming feeling of losing everything. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's really what God used to draw me back to him. And I mean, 
I have said this a thousand times and I'll still say it until the day that I die, but one of the biggest instruments that God used in my life to pull me back to him was Misty. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, over the next few months, I just kind of, you know, like realigned myself. Um, I felt like I was really having to learn to pray as a baby Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and things were, you know, weird sometimes but then that summer um at the time bob and misty were the college life group leaders and we they were taking a trip to st louis to work with a church plant Mm -hmm. and i decided to go um honestly i really think the only reason i went was because they were going to six flags (laughs) (laughs) because in the back of my mind the whole time i'm thinking like other than cassie and misty I don't know these people, you know, like, what am I doing? And I will never forget, but the day that we started to drive home from St. Louis, I had this, like, awful feeling in my chest and in my tummy like I was leaving home. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Cassie that, and I was like, this feels weird. And so I want to say it was, like, within the next week or two, I called the pastor, and I was like, is there any place for me there? Mm. And so I spent the next year and a half in St. Louis just interning with that church plant, and God really— Like, that was just a really odd thing for me to do, Mm -hmm. like, to just, for me personally, to move to a place where I didn't know anyone. However, St. Louis felt like a second home. I mean, like, I fit in there. (laughs) Like, it was good for me. Mm -hmm. Like, that was a good time. Um, I had dated a guy there, and we broke up, and over that summer... I was just thinking, well, he goes to school in Springfield, and so I'm going to go home for the summer, and we'll be close. We'll get Mm. back together. It'll Mm -hmm. be great. And then the first Saturday that I was here, my parents were out of town, and so I was bringing my little sister to a youth event, and um, I'm walking her in because I decided I wanted to see Cassie. Cassie was working there, and... um, is it okay to say people's names? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <okay. laughs> anyway. No, go back. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't miss the Elliot it and re- like, <laughs> that. but anyway, so I wanted to go inside and talk to Cassie. And while we're walking in, I see this guy holding the door and I'm like, gosh, Sarah, why can't I find a guy like that? Like he's handsome and he's, it's Saturday night. He's not on Dixon street. He's holding the door at the church <laughs> youth event. Okay. And then like jokingly, as we walk upstairs, I was like, because the they're already married, duh. And um, like we go on with our night. Well, mm-hmm. the next night, me and Cassie had gone to get pedicures and Starbucks before we went to that night's event. When we walked in, that same guy was standing there and he was like, You can't just walk in here with Starbucks for yourself and not for everybody else. I was like, dude, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> and he said, My name's Jeff Welch. Don't forget it. And, and then we got and married. You, didn't. Mm-hmm. you yeah, never forgot I it. I never forgot <laughs> it. So, you know. Well, five months later, we got married. So, oh really, goodness. five months later. <laughs> um, which, you got married five months later? Yes. I did not remember we that. We met in May and got married wow. in October. Yeah. Wow. When did you get engaged? Eh, July. Oh, my or goodness. Or August. I would not. I don't know if I would say <laughs> I would recommend that to people. Like, but here's the thing. Jeff and I both, and I, this is the only saving grace I would say, we were both right where we needed to be spiritually. Yeah. And Jeff was, Jeff is 10 years older than me. So we were at, I don't know, it was just God's provision and God's timing. And we both just knew, Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't feel like it was wise to put it off. Um, so we got married. I moved back to St. Louis for the beginning of that semester. And we thought that he was going to move up there. He had a Mm -hmm. job at a post office there. And as we were getting ready to like close the door on the chapter here in Northwest Arkansas, we just started looking at everything and financially things just weren't making sense. And I I just remember telling Jeff, you know, God says he has a plan for us and that it's not to harm us. But when we're looking at these numbers, (laughs) it looks pretty harmful. (laughs) And so we didn't go. And so we've been here ever since. And now we have Kendall and Jonesy, two little girls, which... I always said I wanted no kids or two little boys. And but you I also got, said you weren't ever getting married. I know. So. I did. Yeah. I did. But then, you like. stop saying stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. God really likes it when I declare the things. <laughs> so um, I, I cried when I found out Jonesy was a girl because I knew that that was going to be our last child. And, <laughs> and you didn't want a girl? Or you, I didn't. I wanted boys. And I knew I wasn't going to get one. I just. It was raining that day, and I don't remember why I needed to go to Bath and Body Works, but I just remember sitting yeah. in front of Bath and Body you don't Works need a crying. Reason. It's yeah. never a reason. But I just sobbed <laughs> because it was a girl. Aww, and now I funny. cannot even. I'm that child is your child. Baby. Of she, she is. is. She is. She mm-hmm. is. So 
Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. And I love that your story is so, I mean, probably Missy without even you realizing it, she plays such a huge part in your yes. story and, and how it shaped you and, and how God has used that part of your life to even bring you here and just, I mean, Jeff and Jennifer might be married today just because of you, Missy. Oh, that's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> So I love that. I think that's so special. And y'all are just a great example of two people who really could not be more different, but also have a few similarities, but just have a great bond of friendship. And so I love to see that. You got to, you got to tell them what you said, like to Bob after you first met me, like, what did I say? Like, you were just saying like, you have nothing in common with. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. I got in the car after I met her. Well, are we going to, do you want me to tell that? Yeah. I mean, might as well. Well, we were paired in a mentoring program at church. And I happened to be in charge of the mentoring program. (laughs) And I saw that the other ladies weren't, I don't think there was anyone as young as I was. I was, I had, um, I was just a young mom. I don't know how old I was. I mean, Allie was two. Yeah. So however old that was, I don't do numbers very well, but, (laughs) um, anyway, uh, yeah. So we, I paired her with me and I, I could tell it was going to be a challenge because I remembered um, <laughs> just, someone had told me about her. And also they fill out a form and it's like, mm-hmm. I don't go to church. I don't. It was just real. Yeah. Like, this is who I am kind of thing. And I was like, OK, here we go. So we, we met at, I think, IHOP, right? It was Denny's, but yeah, Denny's, it was very Denny's. close. Mm. Yeah. Well, we went to IHOP a lot, but we that, did. Way, that one, it was it Denny's. It always revolved around pancakes. Yeah. We now like, neither of us can eat pancakes. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I didn't think How about full that. circle. Anyway, I got in the car after we met, and I was like praying. Yeah, it wasn't to Bob. It was oh, to God. Okay. It was God. <laughs> My bad. Like, Bob, God, God. Um, I'm going to trust that you put me with this girl for a purpose, but we could not be more different. And just, I was, I just remember intentionally going, God, I just trust you. Because, some, you know, bring something out of this relationship. Just use me because <laughs> I don't, I know it has to be for a reason because, like, I nothing <laughs> you said sounded any way familiar to what I knew of anything. Right. <laughs> it was like, well, I'm not getting married. I want to work in baseball. Uh-huh. I, I, I mean, I don't even like sports. So I was right. like, I couldn't even figure out, like, a question to ask you, though. <laughs> So at first, I, I remember some of this like so vividly, but so the person's house that it was at was the p- people who I had made the connection with. This is before prior Denise, college. before we yes, were paired. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it was like the day of the event. She called and she was like, hey, I'm having a tea at my house tonight. Do you want to come? And when she said jump, I said, how ha. So yeah. like there was, there were no questions. I just got in the car and I get there and I walk in and it's not her at the door. It's somebody else I've never seen before in my (laughs) life. They take a, it was like an actual Polaroid. Yeah. They took a Polaroid and give me a name tag and a form and say, go sit down. And I was like, what in the world? Well, a few minutes later, Misty gets up and she starts talking about this program called common bonds. And then she's like, okay, well, we're going to go around the room and we're going to say what made us decide to do it. And I was the first one. And I was like, <laughs> you were the first one. I was. Because I just remember thinking, I have no time to think of anything up. Like, there's mm. no time for junk here. I got to <laughs> just say it, I guess. I was like, well, I guess God wanted me to be here because I didn't even know this is what I was coming to. Mm-hmm. And before that, I had just filled out the form and it was like very, like, Basic. blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know. And then I just remember as everybody went around the room saying why they were there. And then Misty sp- said a few more things. At the end of that, I just I just went up and I got my form back out of the box and I changed it. And then um, hmm. when I finally met her, I just remember that what day. What did you think about me? Weren't you well, like? Who is I just this remember. Woman? I don't know. I don't think that I ever really had an opinion because I was I was that wrapped up in myself. Honestly, like I just was only mm-hmm. thinking about how you perceived me. Yeah. So, I mean. It's embarrassing, but it's just honest. <laughs> it was just interesting that I was everything you did not want to be. And that's yes, what I remember praying that, about. Yeah. I was like, she, you know, sometimes when you're in a friendship, you're like, at least there's a little bit of mutual yes, admiration. Right, right. Well, that was not happening because <laughs> I was the thing she did not want to do. Right, I was yes. married with children. I didn't Sir, work. You didn't work. I just yep, had my kids. Home. And so anything I enjoyed, you didn't. Right. And it was yep. just like, um, <laughs> so okay, that God help us to find some common grounds here. And um, I probably wasn't even praying at all yeah. at that point. 
<laughs> so that day at Denny's, I just remember thinking, you know what? I'm telling her all my ugly. And mm-hmm. if she stays you did. through this. You did. You told it Then all, didn't you? I guess <laughs> I did. I mean, every awful Misty detail. Has been ever since. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I actually have no memory. No, oh. I just, I've, I've like blocked the whole thing out. <laughs> I'm just and I mean, she's right. At that time, like, I didn't ever want to get married. I didn't mm-hmm. want kids. I wanted to do PR for the New York Yankees. Like, mm-hmm. it was just everything was about myself and very selfishly driven at you that time. You spent a lot of your time in the tanning booth. Yes, I oh. did. I loved the tan on bed. And that was one thing that Misty talked with me about one time. Like, if you, oh, man, if we could go back to some of those conversations. That would be she If was those like, Denny walls could oh, speak. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, this one was Atlanta Bread. I remember vividly. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. You were like, Jennifer. It's December. No one is this tan. <laughs> and I was like, but the owners gave us as employees a Christmas gift of level two tanning for a whole month for free. <laughs> and I was like very proud about it. And you were like, like nobody. You yes. Okay. Hmm. But I mean, like we had some, and I do remember, so we, it had to have been the freshman, the fall semester of my freshman year, because when we started choosing classes for spring semester, mm-hmm. I specifically did not schedule a class on Thursday mornings so that I could have Thursday mornings mm. with Misty. Yeah. And it was, and I was, we did every week. It wasn't just like once no, it a was month. Every it week. was every week. And I dropped Allie off at Mother's Day out and went straight to wherever we met. Mm. Yep. Mm. And so, I mean, like, I would say that was a big part of our relationship is both of us being very committed and willing to do that. And even though I was ridiculous at that time, God, I don't know why, but he just drew me to Misty. And like, for some reason, that desire to be faithful to the mm-hmm. relationship with her. Um, I don't know. It's because like, just thinking back about it, yeah. the idea of me being so consistent about meeting with her really was total opposite to the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was ridiculous. <laughs> Well, for, I don't know if you want us to continue talking about this, but I'll just share one more thing. I um, I just remember she was so – nothing that she desired to do seemed to be uh, to please God. That mm-hmm. really was the last thing she had thought of. Yeah. And so – but I knew she was a believer. Mm-hmm. She, was, she was a believer. She just – it was just hard to find that evidence in her life. And um, I just remember praying that God would give me a vision for – who Jennifer could be mm. if God got a hold of her and just like worked on her and worked on her. And if she, because she has so much energy and spirit yes. and determination, it was like, it wasn't hard to see this picture of who she could be if God just took her and she allowed him to just mold her. And like, what if she had gotten passionate about the Bible? Like I just mm. kind of just dreamed. And so I kind of got a visual of, even though she said she's never getting married, never having kids, I was like, And that doesn't have to be, of course, that's not, I remember thinking it doesn't have to happen like that. But the idea that she'd just taken it out of the picture completely Mm -hmm. showed she had her own ideas in mind. And so it was like, God, just give me a picture of who this girl could be if you just totally molded her. And I remember thinking, well, she's never getting married. She's never doing any of this. Like I could, I was thinking her like, what if she could teach someday? What if Mm -hmm. she could, like, I just remember dreaming those big dreams. And then now it's just like really crazy how God got a hold of her life, mm-hmm. how she got passionate for the word. She, man, this girl knows the word like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. I mean, she, and now it's completely flipped to where she's texting me, well, have you ever thought about why it says this in the scripture? Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about the Old Testament and why? <laughs> like She's asking all these <laughs> deep questions. And I'm like, wow, God, you did a real work on this person. Like she's... She's something else. So, anyway. and like, I don't know, like when you're saying that, I just think about all those years of just trying to like figure out where mm-hmm. did I even fit and what was I good at? Like, I just, there was a constant, like, I wanted to be a country singer. Like, mm. I wanted to be Miranda Lambert when Miranda <laughs> Lambert was on Nashville Star, you guys. Like, I don't know if y'all know this is a thing, but. Anyway, I wanted to be her and like I wanted all these other things. And then after I got married, um, 
I was getting, I had had to drop out of college mm. just because I was on a ton of pain medicine. I couldn't remember anything. So mm. <laughs> <Poor thing. laughs> college terrible. courses were kind of out of the question. Yeah. And then when I decided after Jeff and I got married that I was going to go back, I was like, okay, I want to be an engineer because I love numbers. I love math. And, and then I was like, okay, oh, way maybe I want to be a statistician. Like that would be so fun to be an ESPN <laughs> statistician. Well, then I wanted to be a math teacher because I do actually like kids, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, so it was like all this constant stuff. Well, then, you know, the one thing in my mind that I had always said I didn't want was to be kids or to be have kids to be a mom and then I just the day we brought Kendall home um, Jeff and his, his parents were there and Jeff and his dad had left to go get something and Kendall I can probably count on one hand how many times she really cried mm. in the first two years of her life and just in one of those moments she that day she started just losing it like Mm -hmm. a newborn meltdown and I remember Jeff's mom started to get up to come get her and she was like are you okay and it was the most overwhelming piece I had ever felt in my life and I just Mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was like this this is it Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is what God made me for was to be a mom and it was like the one thing that I didn't want Mm -hmm. you know like I I had no idea you were you were definitely made to be a mom. She's got all the really good instincts and such a wise. She's very wise. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and and going on with like having a vision for somebody and praying for God. That's something you do. With, yeah. We do with our kids. I mean, and we talk about that a lot. Is been doing that praying today towards <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> praying towards that vision that God gives you of a child that is just totally sold out to him mm-hmm. that he can just do mold and use for his glory. Yeah. And so just praying towards that, just getting that picture in your head. I, I do that with my kids too. Mm-hmm. So, and like me right now, I'm praying to get rid of a picture, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and cause I mean, I mean middle school makes... is not yeah. fun. <laughs> no, like, especially for girls, obviously, but I just like, I, what I feel like I want is not mm-hmm. what I want to project on my child. And I want, ugh, it's just hard. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want me to go into that as much. <laughs> no, well, I think it's good. And I mean, our listeners are going to have kids. There's going to be some without kids. And so we just want listeners to know, like, we're planning on talking about all the things here. Yes. So prepare yourselves <laughs> for That's whatever right. that looks like. Um, but as you guys were talking about vision, um, just makes me think of, you know, the vision behind this podcast. And I know that we reached out to you guys, um, but you also set some personal goals that you wanted to see happen on this. So kind of walk us through what that looks like for y'all. Yeah. Um, I have never in my whole life thought of having a podcast. So I don't know about you. Have you ever thought about it before? Maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> she'd probably she'd probably go to bed at night dreaming of what if I ever had a podcast. She just like breaks down oh. Nashville Star episodes and. <laughs> so what I told Jeff this last night. I was like, I've never said this out loud, but I've always wanted to be on a podcast. Oh, so I'm really goodness. trying to like rein in the excitement, that's so and that's funny. why you're on it is because you didn't say anything about it. <laughs> so I'm a huge fan of Elisa Childers' podcast. Like I, I listen to it faithfully, but I, that's really it. I'm just not a big podcast person. And so, um, at first I'm like, I have nothing to share. I was just like, I don't, I kind of, I'm like, I'm not really an authority on anything though. I love to talk, (laughs) 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 but, um, we, I, when I talked to Jennifer about it, we started really just hitting on the interview driven type Mm -hmm. of podcast. And I, (laughs) and so something weird, I've always, I don't know. Growing up, I went to several different schools. My mom was a um, a choral director mm-hmm. and music teacher. And so I went to, I don't know how many schools, like six different schools growing up wow. in the same town. And um, I got very good at entering a room that I knew no one and just mm-hmm. talking to people. And so it's kind of a, I, I guess I could talk to a tree kind of thing. Like just, <laughs> I, and I really yeah. love like if I sit on a subway, I have to sit there and restrain myself from going, <laughs> hi, how are you? Like, what's your name? Where, mm-hmm. you know, where are you from? I love it so much. So when we hit on the interview part and then we started talking about stories, mm-hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, this sounds so much fun mm-hmm. because my other love in life is stories. Yeah. I just, I love a story, a movie, a book, um, people's stories. I just, um, I feel like 
just in life in general, we really underestimate the power of a story and yeah. how it can impact us. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. are illustrations so popular for preachers is because that's the thing you're left with. Right. You go yeah. home and you're like, mm-hmm. he used this amazing illustration. Mm-hmm. Just story is just so powerful. And so I was pretty excited when we started kind of figuring out how we wanted to shape it and everything. Yeah. yeah. And you were excited from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like not get excited, like in the event that it all fell through. And mm. also I don't want it to be about me or my feelings. Mm. Like I just, I need that to not be a thing. So I try not to even think about it. But one thing that we are both incredibly passionate about is digging deep. Mm. And we were like, how are we going to do this? Because one of our main goals is engage ladies minds because mm. I don't know. You could just look on social media and people are craving it, but they're looking for it in all the wrong places. Right. And it is one of my, like, it just grates on my nerves. Like we have a huge church and there are all these young girls who are seeking parenting advice on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I, and that freaks me out. <laughs> like, I mean, you don't know if those people have kids that are going to grow up to be serial killers or not. And right. like, I have a friend that <laughs> will occasionally message me and she'll be like, our personalities are similar. I think our kids are similar. So what do you think? And um, seriously, I always end the text message or phone call with please hold what I say very loosely because Mm -hmm. my children are not grown. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to turn (laughs) out. (laughs) Like, I mean, but seriously. And so I just feel like there's, there's a hunger for it, but Mm -hmm. also like, I don't know, a deep. I think with the other terrible things that social media has brought us Mm -hmm. and just the online world in general, uh, one thing is the quick quote and how that's supposed to change your life. You'll see people share quotes and it's like, this, oh, this is it. Mm -hmm. Um, And you'll see just, you know, something happen in the world and everybody takes a side immediately. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times verses are shared, you know, we have no context. We just like this little blurb. Every quote, you know, you can take it from wherever. Who knows what was said before or after. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, and you know, the hot take on subjects, I've just gotten to where I just pull back and go, I don't want to be on a side. Mm -hmm. I would just like to say, you know, I would like to be that person that's like, you know what, probably there's good things on both sides. Yeah. Before, Mm -hmm. before social media, I don't think we all felt like we had to, Mm -hmm. you know, you didn't have to claim a a place. And so I just really didn't know about it. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. We were just, but I just really like on here, I just like, I just think it'll be fun to dig into the deep subjects without having like a hot take or taking a quote and saying, this is the quote we're talking about today. Like we're, you know, there's not, it's not, the Bible isn't easy. Mm -hmm. Our, our spiritual walks aren't easy. Mm -hmm. Marriage isn't easy, you know, just, and so instead of just like trying to, you know, we're going to, we're going to struggle through it here. We're going to, No. Go deep. <laughs> I think it's perfect. And honestly, we live in a culture where critical thinking is like a thing of the past, yes. which is dangerous yes. in so mm-hmm. many ways. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that, you know, you want to come on here and engage ladies' minds, I think that's so valuable. And honestly, like you said, we know women go everywhere to gain what they're looking for, but they find what they think they were looking for. Yes. Um, and at Confirmation the end of the day, bias. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not really what they need mm-hmm. and or most of the times what they want. And so hopefully this is a space where women can come and like I said, just the, the mind is challenged and you feel hopefully at the end of it better about your relationship with Christ and closer to God in the end of it as well. Well, honestly, if you feel not leaving good about your yeah. relationship with Christ, that's great. It's a gut check to <laughs> yeah. make it better. Good yeah. job. Exactly. You were listening. Yeah. Like you have work to do. I right. mean, honestly, I'd, that's true for I'd, sure. We talk a lot about that. I mean, One of the problems is people are seeking just a good feeling from everything and just, you know, that's all they want is just to make sure you're happy about it and not uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, if we make people uncomfortable, I don't know if they'll keep listening, Jennifer. (laughs) So (laughs) that's why we're going to always end with a little happy. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) Before we close out with our little happy, I want to ask you all a question. And this word has just been kind of imprinted on my heart this week. Um, and it's a deeper question, but why do you prefer Jesus? I think there's just so much that this world offers us, um, and especially as women. And, you know, you can listen to all kinds of things that make you happy and fluff you up. Um, 
and there's no meat behind it. So why is it that you prefer Jesus at the end of the day? Sure. Um, so this is something that honestly, I've been thinking about this a lot lately why and it's because of no, you. you have not, you've been thinking about <laughs> why you prefer Jesus. Yes. <laughs> because like, and I did not in, text in, like, her before in a, sure, like, in sure. a defense type of way, uh-huh. because we've been going through Alyssa Childers and other gospel and, and before that apologet mama bear apologetics and just this idea of defending your faith. And like, I actually can confidently say like, I prefer Jesus because I know he's real mm-hmm. and because he is he is actually true. It can be proven. There are facts behind that. It isn't based on someone's feelings. It isn't based on someone's vision, like that we have all of this evidence that proves the Bible is real. If the Bible is real and the Bible is true, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> if the Bible is real and the Bible is true, then Jesus is real. Mm-hmm. And if all of the Bible is true, why wouldn't I want that? Right. If Jesus is who he says he is, why would I not want that? Um, and so, honestly, it's because of you that I, that I feel what? like I can— well, I know what just, you mean, the class. You know, yeah. We've been studying another gospel, mm-hmm. uh, Elisa Childers' book, and Progressive Christianity. So we've I've been leading a class um, on that. And, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I was thinking, too. But the word prefer, I, in my head, the first thing I thought of was, like, I don't know if I prefer Jesus. No. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's he's— the world, like what I've been realizing just lately is just stop it. I mean, it's going to sound dumb to just say it out loud, but just say it. the <laughs> idea that he made time, like yeah. he made, yeah. I just picture him. He made everything in mm-hmm. this world. We walk around and we look at the, look at nature and it's like, he made that for us to enjoy mm-hmm. whether or not I prefer yeah. him on a daily basis he made this for me. We learned about, what was it called, Jennifer? Natural uh, natural revelation. Oh, yeah. And the idea that even people that don't prefer yeah. him, that don't choose him, he made this world for them to enjoy. Mm-hmm. He made every, you know, he is taking care of them. Even when they reject him, Yeah, yeah. He, they are still um, enjoying the pleasures of God every day. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I do obviously prefer Jesus. (laughs) Well, that's a good take on that. that, I was thinking, well, maybe we don't prefer Jesus because Jesus is harder. Like, Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? That's what I was thinking. And this is what happens when we have conversations is that I start out (laughs) thinking one thing and then she says a thing and I'm like, no, then maybe I don't prefer Jesus. Well, no, you said what I was thinking too. But we're digging deeper. Exactly. And that's what we want. Yes. And that's what this is going to be about. And yeah, yeah, it is a tricky thing. And I think preference is very personal. And so I love that you said, I don't, I don't know that I do. It's like, yeah, he preferred me maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That was a good question. I've never really thought about the idea of preferring Jesus. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should work on that. That I I don't just choose Jesus, but that I prefer him. Mm -hmm. Uh Ooh, that's good. Right? That's good. Do I just choose him or do I prefer him? I like that. I'll have to really think about that. We'll write that down. We'll think about that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so we want to close out the show with a little something happy every time. Just something that the ladies are loving. Because mm. why, I, what do they call it now? Like water gating? It's not called water gating. Oh, There's like a term for this term? is when you know something good, but you don't share it with other people. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah. Maybe it's not water yeah. gate. Well, I don't know. It doesn't feel right. It's something with the word <laughs> gate in there. Oh, but okay. anyways, so what are y'all loving that you want to share about? You go first, system. Okay. I was... So when you said that, it was reminding me of something, but this isn't the happy, but I'll say what it was reminding me of. Um, I'm We're going to Israel here in a couple of weeks, Bob mm, and I, special. and I'm so excited. Mm. But I have been studying and I've been looking at our int- itinerary and trying to make sure I understand the historical significance about every place. Yeah. And when I was thinking about sharing it, I was like, okay, so you have to know that Bob is so smart, <laughs> <laughs> so smart. He knows everything. Yep. And so mm-hmm. I'm studying it. I'm like, he's going to be so proud of me. And then I'm th- I started thinking, I'm not even going to share it. Like I'm going <laughs> to, when we get there, I'll just say, do you know about this place? <laughs> and so I'm guessing that's whatever you said, like yeah. the water gating thing. Yeah. Where it's like, I'm going to keep all this info to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, my happy is I have been reading Beth Moore's book, um, All My Knotted Up Life. Mm. 
Oh. I've seen that. Wow. Good. So I I did Beth some of Beth Moore's Bible studies a long time ago. Um, one of her uh, conferences that I went to, and, and like I, I'm I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna say that I've enjoyed Beth Moore and a few of her book studies, but I'm not like I'm not one of those people that's done all of them and it's like yeah. knows much about her. She's just kind of, but she did. I do remember a conference I went to where I felt like God was telling me you need to write, you mm-hmm. have to write. And that's when I started writing my novel. It was after mm-hmm. one of her conferences. So um, it was through some things that I studied there. But anyway, um, this book is very, very good. Mm-hmm. You can, if you, I don't, it doesn't really matter what you think about her as a person. It's just the story of her life. There are um, so many Southern Mm -hmm. It's rich in like Southern details and Southern Baptist church details and then just family, just issues and just, I have cried probably four times listening. So she said- And it makes you happy? Yeah. (laughs) The good tears. Yeah. You know what? You know what? That's funny you said that, but stories- that have pain in them oh. are the ones that make you the That's most fulfilled. That's true. Right. They always our favorite Those movies. are the only yeah. ways that you grow is listening to stories of people that have struggled and come out the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And right. I mean, she just so many times just watching how God, God has definitely used her and watching how God picked her from this family mm-hmm. that you would never believe and just said, I'm going to use you, and then just pulled her through so many things mm-hmm. and then used that pain to help her, like, serve him. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's it's very, very good. Oh, I cry. Yeah. I mm-hmm. always cry when I love something. <laughs> In <laughs> fact, it's not always over sad stuff. Like, I'm listening yeah. to it. I'm like, God just used her so much. <laughs> I mean, it's bad. I kept texting my daughter. I'm like, you have to read this book. It's so good. She's like, whatever, Mom. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, it's my happy, though it was a little sad, I guess. But, yeah. What's What's yours? So, my happy is this coffee (laughs) mug. Because it's it's just so pretty. It is really cute. It's so cute. And all three of us could use it with the W on there. So, does that mean Um, we can next week or next time? Sure, sure. Okay. Sure. It's Um, the communal coffee. Well, I plan on taking it in the traveling coffee mug. Yes. Girl, who makes that? Um, This coffee mug? Rifle. Mm Rifle. Of course they do. Yes. Um, Actually, so the whole day, well, I probably Monday started thinking about, I didn't want to think about today. Like I just Mm -hmm. wanted it to happen and be natural. So I was trying to think of things that would make me cozy, feel cozy. And Mm -hmm. I was like, I just want to drink my coffee out of my mug. And then that makes me happy. So you did. My coffee from my Jura in my mug. I love that. And it is really cute. Rifle has the cutest stuff. They make so many good things. Um, Mine is very superficial. Lately. I mean, listen, I know people's opinions on makeup, but I'm going to wear it because I want to at the end of the day. I know what my do you natural mean people's face. opinions. I well, don't. Well, you know, don't wear it. Your natural what? beauty is so oh. whatever. I don't care. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> One time I told my grandma that I was going to stop wearing makeup because I was just tired of it. And she said, Jennifer Danielle, don't you ever lose your pride. <gasps> <laughs> That's going in the front of my Bible, ma'am. Thank right. you for writing that. Yes. Her name's um, Kay if you need to add okay. that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I found this product that I love. It's a two-in-one, which anything to cut down the getting ready time in the morning, which honestly it takes me light years and my husband <laughs> pays for it. So it is a bronzer stick on one side and it's a like cream and then it's a cream blush on the other side. It's called Dibs and it's called a Desert Island Duo. So I feel <gasps> tropical when I'm putting it on my face. It's very <laughs> cold here today. And so it makes me feel better just by that, but also saves me money. Your cheeks are so, so golden and beautiful. I know. They sun kissed. Okay, so yes. what, what is this product? Yes, what where do you find it? it? It's called Dibs. Oh, and that's it's, the product. Mm-hmm. That's the brand. Yep, okay. You buy it online. Um, oh, that's I, come on. I, I, mm-hmm. Influencer made it. You know, oh, I, I get yeah. sucked great. into that influencer world. Yes. I think that's my dream job is to tell people what to buy for a discounted rate. And you so, probably just told tens and tens of people tens about and this. Tens. <laughs> Go and get it, ladies. It's so good. A million shades. Um, I'm so, yeah. have to check that yeah. out. And it's yeah. very user friendly. I've never really used a browser. Oh, so. See, I was worried about it too. Do about you do placement. the thing where you put all the. I just watched a face. bunch of yeah yes, you gotta yeah watch I kind of look like yeah. I'm preparing for Avatar in right, the morning right. but then I just blend it okay. and it gets better so 
I need to learn how to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's our little happies. I hope that y'all yeah. go out and find your own little happies this week. In um, the right there, places. Yes, in the right places. <laughs> Be careful with that. From the Lord. <laughs> from the Lord. <laughs> And just back it up with scripture if you're yeah. concerned that it's well, I mean, a bad little I'm not little saying happy. it has to be like, you got to find it at the church. I mean, no, coffee. No. I mean, I'm yes, just saying. Yes, yes. Like, so. you just, these days, you can't just say, go find your no, happy. You're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It has, yeah, church, just, yeah, just double check it. Ask your Christian friends if you're just questioning <laughs> what what it is that should be making you happy. So Just drop a comment and then we'll tell you if yes. it's okay or not. Yeah, we'll be honest with you if it's good. <laughs> if it's good or not. All right, well, that concludes includes our very first episode Yay. of we didn't even title it <gasps> oh. y'all y'all introduce the name it's so good it's called long, long story, story short. short and there you have it i hope y'all enjoyed it and we will be back with a second episode soon bye